Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech Channel, and today what we're looking at is a unit that's a little low on refrigerant. Uh, I'm checking it in superheat, all right, because this is an outdoor condenser, okay? The indoor evaporator coil has a piston, you know, or an orifice or the same thing. It does not have a TXV, so I have to check the refrigerant charge via the superheat process, okay? So not the subcooling process that you would use with a thermostatic expansion valve, but this one does have a piston or orifice at the evaporator coil uh, that's sitting right on top of the furnace inside. All right, the outdoor temperature is right around 68 degrees, and um, you know it's reaching that lower limit of when you can check a charge. You got to have a load on the house or the building uh, to check the refrigerant charge. We've already determined that we need about 20 degrees of superheat, so we're just going to go ahead and check with the the probe. Right now, it's reading 68 degrees outside and what we're going to do is we're going to take this temp probe right here and we're going to mount that onto the suction line you want to make sure that that is out of the sun okay and i like these little uh temp probes a little thermocouple end just because it's really sensitive it's a very small piece of bimetal all right and it'll get a real true accurate reading all right so our temperature is going down. It's reading the temperature on the suction line. Okay, this is the suction vapor or low side line. All right, and this one over here, that's called the head pressure discharge line, liquid line, or the high side line. Okay, normally referred to as the liquid line. This one's normally referred to as the vapor or suction. Some people refer to it as a low side. All right, so this blue um, gauge right here attaches to the large line and that's where we need to check for superheat presently we have about 54 psig okay on the outer ring then we travel that into the green ring okay the green ring is the saturated temperature of r22 in the middle of the evaporator coil on the inside of the unit it's basically telling you what the saturated temperature should be right now with this vapor pressure as it stands now all right what you're doing is you're comparing that to the actual temperature on the line okay so it's actually the actual temperature minus the saturated temperature and that will give you your superheat value all right right now we have 60 uh we'll just call it 60 all right 60.5 roughly we'll kind of call it 60 degrees minus 29 degrees saturated and so you're left with 31 degrees of superheat all right we already checked all right, we already checked our wet bulb by our closest return to the furnace, all right, uh, and the evaporator coil. We, we checked that wet bulb, and we also checked the outdoor ambient temperature, and we are actually looking for about 20, 21 degrees of superheat, and we have 31, okay, 60.3 minus 29, say 29.3, and we have um, 31 degrees of superheat. So 31 degrees, we should have 21, or about 10 degrees off. Our superheat is too high. That's an indication that you are low on refrigerant, all right? So uh, as long as you've checked, you've checked the filter already, the very first thing you've checked, you've checked to make sure you got proper airflow out of the registers, now you're checking the refrigerant charge, and you're, you have too high of a superheat value, then what that means is the a refrigerant charge is a little low. That could either be due to a refrigerant leak or that could be from uh, maybe some technicians connecting and disconnecting the refrigerant hoses and not really putting the ref refrigerant from the hoses back from the high side at least back into the system again before disconnecting. So um, it could be a couple things. If it's only a little bit off, it's not going to take a whole lot, you know, to get the superheat up. It shouldn't, you know, just a few ounces hopefully. Uh, but this is R22 the R22 outdoor condenser, and that is a superheat process. That's how you check the refrigerant charge. It's the actual temperature on the vapor line within a few inches of the service port, okay? The temperature of the actual line minus the saturated green uh, temperature on your gauge. There's actually a pressure temperature gauge built into this onto your gauge, all right? So you can see where it brings it in. If it was Fortinet, and I was checking the superheater of the four tonight. I'll go to the pink or rose colored ring. All right. But that's it. That's how you check to see if your refrigerant charge is correct.
All right. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to find the superheat value needed. Since it's not on the rating plate, you actually need to find that out through the wet bulb and the outdoor ambient temperature. Today what we're looking at is how to uh, figure out the superheat needed to charge for a air conditioner, all right, so an outdoor condenser or a heat pump in AC mode. The very first thing we're going to need to do after checking what refrigerant it is, we're going to need to determine if the unit, if the evaporator coil uh, has a TXV, okay, or if it has a piston um, slash orifice, all right, so this is a this is a little orifice. They come in different sizes. All right, a piston or an orifice are the same thing. Okay, um, but if you do not have a TXV, uh, then you know you have a piston. All right, so you can need you need to leave a look at the rating plate on the evaporator quill. But the the best way to tell is just to make sure maybe open the face up to that evaporator quill just to verify that there is no TXV before using the superheat charging method. Okay, so first. First thing we need to do is is get a wet bulb reading. Okay, so this particular uh, tool right here is called a digital psychrometer. All right, and you're gonna turn that on and change it to wet bulb. All right, presently right now I think it says 62 roughly. Okay, you're gonna put that near the return of the indoor unit. Okay, um, so whether that's at the largest return grill, okay, or right near the unit at the return as long as the um, as long as you're in the return duct work or, or something very close to return duct work obviously not in the attic um, so I usually put this right near the largest return grill and I like to have a place to set it uh, because your wet bulb is going to change as you charge the unit okay that has to do with the humidity in the house and as you lower the humidity due to the air conditioning system running even if it's only 5, 10, 15 minutes, your wet bulb is going to lower. So we're just looking for our initial superheat reading, and then you're going to have to check it continually as you charge the unit. Presently, it's roughly right around 63, we'll say. Okay, it says 63. All right, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go out to the outdoor unit and check the uh, outdoor temperature. All right, you're going to need to get a uh, charging chart for superheat, which you can find online or are in some of the older uh, condensing uh, shrouds, okay? But uh, I would suggest you carry one, long, carry one with you, um, whether that's a digital one or just a paper form is fine. All right, so now we're going to go out to the outdoor condenser. All right, so now we're at the outdoor unit. All right, so we got our temp probe here, and we're going to check what temperature it is. Now, hot air is going to end up be end up blowing out of the top of this unit. So the hot air is going to be blowing this way. So we want to take our temperature reading down low. All right. Uh, down low and out of the sun. Okay. So we're at about, say, 67. Yeah, but we'll say about 67. All right. So you're going to take your temp probe, and you're not going to go too close to the fins. You're going to stay away from the fins. All right. And just realize that the air is always sucking inward. Okay. And then blowing up out of the top of the unit. So you want to get a true reading in the shape. All right, so 67. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at our uh, superheat charging chart. All right, so we go over to this superheat charging table. And since we said we had an outdoor temperature of 67, okay, you can go 65 or 70 degrees for your outdoor temperature. All right, this superheat uh, charging table is found on the inside cover uh, of the outdoor condenser. All right, you can find these uh, superheat charging tables for wet bulb and outside temperature to find your needed superheat that you need to charge these to. You can find them online and sometimes in the old um, covers, all right, of the outdoor condensers. Um, I'm sure you can also get apps for them as well, um, but you know, a paper version would be fun. All right, so uh, 65 degrees and 70 degrees. Let's just take 65 across, okay? We said we had um, 63 for the wet bulb. All right, so we're going to get take 65 across, okay, and we're going to take 62 up. All right, 62 degree wet bulb. So we have 21 degrees of superheat is what we need to charge the system to. All right. So now let's take a look at 70 degrees for the outdoor temp. We bring that across, and we line that up with 64. 
okay? And we get 21 again. If these numbers were off, we would go ahead and take the average of this number and this number, and that's what we would charge it to. Remember that you have to continually check uh, the superheat uh, as you reduce the wet bulb temperature inside the house. As the unit's running, say the unit runs for 10 minutes or so, your wet bulb inside the house is going to lower, okay? And then you have to check for the needed superheat again. Maybe it reduces to 19. All right, so you have to continually check that every 10 or 15 minutes uh, of running time, or maybe a little bit even, maybe a little bit more yet. Um, but uh, you do want to be aware that your your required superheat that you need to charge the system to on systems that have pistons, orifices, and uh, capillary tubes does change as you are charging the unit. All right, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and see you next time at AC Service Tech.